My name is Anita Clifford and I'm a barrister at Red Lion Chambers and this is a 30 minute update um, which is very much directed at giving you the latest headlines when it comes to recent cases dealing with account freezing and forfeiture um, and also looking a bit at how you would defend an account freezing or forfeiture order in practice um, and so that's where we're heading today. Um, here, I just wanted to set the scene a little bit before we dive into our discussion. Um, and that really is the purpose of um, having these account freezing and forfeiture provisions at all. Now, in practice, what does lead to a freeze? And these are some, some triggers for a bank account freeze, which I have seen um, really over the course of the last 12 months. Um, typical example um, will be where, and you see this a lot in the news, it's getting quite a lot of attention in the media where um, in the mainstream press, there might be articles or columns um, giving um, uh, advice on, well, what do you do if, if a bank freezes your account? Um, and that might be because of irregular payments. It might be because a query about source of funds has not been answered in, in, in the way that the bank wants. Now, this then led, um, interestingly, to two... Um, cross application so that the NCA um, sought to bring judicial review um, proceedings in the High Court um, in relation to the judge's decision to permit the variation. Um, I think in this particular case, uh, what I had read was that the variation of the account freezing orders um, ultimately permitted something to the tune of £600,000 for, for, for various basic needs. Um, and but secondly, I think more more importantly for our discussion, um, two companies in particular sought to um, judicially review the judge's decision to not set aside um, the account freezing orders. And so this is probably helpful if you're um, advising clients or indeed affected by um, any of these provisions. 